Daryl Bensinger from DNL Bensinger Military Vehicle Parts, and today we're going to put a set of markings for World War II Jeep on this World War II Ford. We're going to use the Invasion Star markings the customer wants, which would be, you know, those those Jeeps marked after the Invasion of Normandy in '44. We have right on the table the marking kit which we purchased from Rick Larson. The large hood star is first. We have the two hood numbers and USA markings. We have the two sets of numbers we're putting on the front bumper, one on each side. Unit markings and vehicle number and mark. We have the small invasion stars, which we're putting on the rear corners of the Jeep. We have a small star for the front bumper. And we have the two sets of markings for the rear bumperettes. Now I'd recommend when, when putting these kits on, uh, even though I've done it numerous times, still I, I start with the bumperettes and some of the smaller unit markings in the back. Every time you do this you want to kind of get reaccustomed to doing it again because you don't do it that often. Get used to working with the material and we'll work up to doing this big star towards the end. The big hood star is the most visible as are the, the two hood marking units and there's a lot of things to work around. You'll see when we get to those. So we're going to start with the rear bumperette work. Okay, we're going to start with the rear bumperette right side unit marking. The top of the bumperette, I'm just going to measure the top bumperette at about 7 inches and then I'll measure what my marking is, try to get it centered and we will uh, we'll measure this. I got about 5 inches worth of marking here all together. So I marked the, marked the paper at at seven inches on there. Also to center it, which I have a mark here and a mark there. That's going to give me where I want to put that in relation to the corners of the bumper and get it fairly well, fairly well centered. Uh, the material here, the weight inner paper, is about the same exact height as the as the uh, bumper. Act, so we're going to use that for the spacing in that direction. So we'll start off by pulling the backer off. Now I'll line my, my marks up and the weight area there. Lightly touch that at the top. And that seems pretty good. Okay, we'll get that all well smoothed out here. Now we'll take the top coating of the paper off. Check to make sure that we're tight around all the edges. feels good. Okay, now we'll do a little taping up for our overspray. As Rick's directions quite clearly specify, you want to be awfully sure that you've got your base paint, your green, Plenty dry before you uh, start to apply the mark. You don't want to be pulling off your base green when you pull the transfer sheet back off. Use plenty of uh, tape and plenty of paper. Make sure you don't have any spots where the paint can slide in underneath there. Now all we're using to paint this is a satin finish 
oil-based rattle cam. In this case, we're using a Rust-Oleum sat. And we'll get started here. Okay, get a good spray pattern, and we'll just lightly mist over these. Just going back and forth over the whole works. Like that. All right, leave the paint flash off a little and just, you know, take it easy. Don't, don't uh, try to cover it all in one shot because it'll be, you'll get too thick, you'll end up with it running. So just missed it a few times and keep, let it flash off. Chance to, to flash a little bit before you get too much paint on it. And when it looks pretty thick, looks like it's pretty even with the white background, now we're going to start removing the paper away. You want to be a little careful that your paper doesn't flip around and mess up the stencil. Now we're back down to the to the mask. Well, I like to use oil base gives you a little bit of time to work, and you don't you don't get a bridging of the paint drying across the stencil. This is why we're taking the stencil back off right away. You don't want to leave these things on here and allow the paint to bridge over the edge. As soon as you've got got it painted, you want to pull the stencil off while the paint's still wet, and you just got to be. A little careful here. Especially when you got numbers like this, threes and A's that have interior sections in them. You want to be a little careful pulling them off that they don't turn around and flip back into the stencil. And there we go, we're off and running. First one. Now we'll move over and do this one. Okay, this side we've got a similar situation. We've got more markings. These markings happen to be seven inches along at the top of our bumperette, seven inches. So I've transferred a line up to the top edge here that I'm going to use to line it up and center it on the bumperette. So, we are ready to separate the paper. Bring this right up to the corners of the bumperette. Tighten it along the top. Stretch it down a little so we have Bubbles. And we'll peel off the transfer. This is going to be fun to pull back off with these big triangles in the middle here and these little bridges to go around them. We just have to take our time there. And if, if we get too much trouble, we might ask the camera girl's assistance to pull. <laughs> Some of them out. We won't. We won't get carried away till till we find we're in trouble. I like to put a little tape along the bottom, even though it looks like there's nothing there. Particularly in the front, sometimes you end up spraying the end of the leaf spring. It looks a little funny with a weight leaf spring. So now we're ready to tape off the surrounding area again. See what we got for spray pattern. And we'll just lightly mist over this. And again, not trying to get too much on there at once. You just kind of take your time, let it flash off a little bit. 
and not get too rammy. Which if my dad hears, he's rolling over in his grave right now because Rammy has been my middle name. Let's try to let that lightly flash off. Don't want to get runs out of a helmet. Looks pretty solid. All right, I'm going to call that good. And I try to take the paper off somewhat in reverse order it was put on. So you're not pulling tape out from under other tape. Now my plan is going to be to pull left to right so that these little centers and these threes have more of a more of a material to pull with. That way you're not just pulling on them little bridges of the threes. They still might tear off, but we'll just we'll just see if we can take our time. Next, we'll do some rear stars.